Okay, so I got this for a flavor that I'm, I'm enjoying. It still has that, that good bite to it from that ginger, from the turmeric, but the applesauce really helped it out a lot to kind of give it more of a smooth flavor as well and give it just enough sweetness that it's a little sweet right now, but I like it a little sweet right now because I know that after I bottle it, I'm gonna keep it in a warm place for about two to three days. And that's max how much I need to keep it. And then that's gonna, keeping it in a warm, dark place for two to three days will actually allow it to carbonate uh, when it, because it's gonna be capped off for the, the when, it's, when the yeast is feeding off of that sugar in there, it, does, it can't escape. So it's just gonna build up carbonation in there. And so it'll actually eat off a lot of that sugar. And so if I keep, the longer I keep it, the more sharp it will become. And so I do like it with a little bit of sweetness. I mean, just a very, very little bit of sweetness. And uh, so most of the sugar is gone though. So it's not a lot of calories and things like that. And it's, uh, again, it's a nice, healthy fermented drink. That's a good gut, gut drink. And because it has ginger and turmeric in it and everything else, it also helps with um, well, fermentation in the first place, kombucha in the first place helps with uh, weight loss, but you even have the extra benefit of the ginger and turmeric in there as well to add with that as well. So again, the easy way I like to do it, instead of putting fruit juice in each of the bottles and then putting kombucha into each of the bottles, is I mix fruit juice and kombucha together in a large pitcher. Then I just get a, get a funnel and I start pouring it into the different bottles. I got two different funnels here for two different size bottles. This is a 64 ounce bottle right here. I also have some uh, 16 ounce bottles right here. Uh, and I'm gonna be using some 22 ounce bottles later on, but also have some 12 ounce bottles right here. And all these have the flip caps, so it's easy where I don't have to use my capper to put them on, I just fill them up. And I always leave about uh, an inch or so uh, open from the top because all that carbonation is gonna build up in there and it needs, um, it needs some air flow, it needs some space to kind of create that, that, that nice pressurized carbonation. And also you gotta be careful if you fill up too much, you can cause a bottle to explode because there's nowhere for that, that gas to go. So always try to keep like a, a inch or so um, a space from the top once I fill them up. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my big daddy here. I'm gonna give it one more stir also just to make sure the juice and kombucha is all mixed up together so that every single bottle kind of has that same flavor profile. All right, so here we go. We're bottling it up. Nice thing about using larger bottles is you don't have to do this over and over and over and over and over and over again. And the reality is, uh, I have so much kombucha ready right now that I can probably, uh, actually probably have a, two, four, five, six, I have at least seven or eight more gallons of kombucha ready. And so but we're not gonna do all of that today. So we're doing just uh, probably about four gallons today. And so we'll kind of in this right here, we have, I have about nine gallons ready. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this one is basically right up to here, I think you can see that. And because it's such a big bottle, I'm gonna go ahead and allow that much space to stay, stay there. That way it has room for the gas to, to be released, but still contain in the bottle. And then that's going to really produce a nice uh, fermented, carbonated, yummy kombucha. Okay, so that's one down. And so, I'm not gonna let you, I'm not gonna show you all of these, so just do one like this as well, so you can kind of see where I stop it at, and then we'll cut this video, and then we'll come back for another process of kombucha making. And also, we're gonna, we'll open a couple of ones I already have done, so you can kind of see what it looks like, and the carbonation, and we'll, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna do something fun, well, I'm gonna take one of my ginger ales that I made. I made ginger beer and ginger ale. And ginger ale, I don't recommend because I made it with molasses and molasses just uh, didn't, no good. I mean, it tastes all right, but it doesn't taste 
anywhere near what ginger beer tastes like. But I'm gonna show you how carbonated it gets. And I'm not gonna shake it up or anything, I'm just gonna open one up. Because when I open these things up, a lot of times I gotta like baby open them because they'll just, if not, then they'll, that carbonation just sprays out. So, but anyway, so this one right here, we'll put a little bit more in. And uh, if you can just be here right now though, my wife, like she'll walk out the room and she'll walk back in and she'll go, she'll say, why does it smell like bread in here? And the reason why it smells like bread is she's smelling all the yeast from the, from the, the fermented, uh, from the kombucha. And it really does, it kind of gives that yummy sourdough type of smell to it. And so, um, so anyway, so this one probably has a little bit more than I want it to be in there, but it, it still should be okay. So I'm gonna cap that one off and I'm gonna turn the video off and fill up the rest and we'll go to another process of kombucha making after all this.